All right. Well, we're gonna pick back up. I'm uh, processing some lumber that I've had. I don't know, I've probably had it well over a year. Just run it through the planer. Basically what I'm trying to do is get a top and bottom surface that's flat. And also when I do that with the two by fours, um, well actually two by sixes, two by fours and two by sixes. But when I do that, I knock off some of that little rounded edge that's on the edges. Um, I like having that pull down extension cord. Those things are really, really neat. Because I mean, you can put tools pretty much anywhere and you've got power to it. Um, there I am taking off that little rounded edge. And then by doing that with that flat edge on the table saw, uh, I've then got a 90 degree angle. And I can use that up against the fence of the table saw to really make sure I've got a nice good um, a piece of stock to work with. Here I am using the table saw sled. It's like a panel sled. I really like those. Um, Norm Abram used to use one that was reverse where the fence was on the front for cutting big panels and stuff. I like doing those. Um, I'm using that magnetic base that's actually a machinist thing. I got it at uh, Harbor Freight. It's for like putting dial indicators on and stuff, but I like using it for a GoPro mount. There I am pushing my, my tripod a little bit with the, with the sled, but I like using that because I can use it as a real good stop for the table saw. Um, I guess anywhere. But I use it as a as a GoPro mount. I like doing that because you can kind of put it just about anywhere with the metal surface. Um. Now, here's a little now, story. I got to tell the about a three bad brothers. You know so well. It started way back in history with that. In history with me, Mike D. We had me, Mike D. We had me. Me and Ma was here. Me and Ma was here. Right before we had beer. Right before we had beer. So anyway, after I had a little fun with that, we're back out here and um, what are these called? Lap joints, half flap joints, um, where you take the exact half of your thickness and you cut little places to kind of, gives you a really good joint because you're already lined up. It's, it, it forces a 90 degree angle as long as your table saw and your sled and all of your previous cuts are good. Um, but, uh, I use two of those just to kind of hold, two little brad nails, uh, just to hold those in, pre in, in place, um, to let them dry long enough, uh, and you'll see I go through and put some dowels. Here I am on the corners, um, just showing, I mean, I've already marked it, but I forgot to film it. And that's a little little piece of wood that I set up real quick. It gives me my two angles to match up with the outside face. And then I'm using a brad point bit, lining that up with my line that I have in there and just kind of giving myself a place to drill. Even that way, when you look at it, you know, they all 
we're kind of in the same spot. Um, unfortunately, I did hit like one of those brads here in a second. You'll see, oh, I don't know if it's, uh, I obviously didn't show it. But you put some, uh, put a little bit of wood in there. And then that's a dowel that I had and I kind of made it purposefully smaller and you'll see up there. Um, that way when you put your glue in there, you can kind of spin it and it spreads the glue all the way down the hole. Um, there I am just showing that I've got all of them. They look pretty janky right now, but they normally do before all the sanding and everything. Um, there I am just letting them sit and dry. Um, all right, so here I go back with a flush, uh, flush trim saw. Yeah, that's what they're called. And uh, just cutting those off, sanding, a lot of sanding. Ooh-wee, ooh-wee, if you knew the amount of sanding disc that I used. Then here I am, oh God. Here I am using a, uh, a piece of wood that I can clamp onto it that sits in between where those lap joints are. That way I've got a nice, good, straight edge to run across the saw. I use that, flip it over, that way I can trim the lap joints really, really good. Here I am cutting, I think it ended up being a little bit under three quarters of an inch channel for the glass to sit into. Um, I wanted the glass, which was a quarter inch, to sit in there and then I wanted to give myself enough to um, put some silly some silicone. Here I am notching the corners from the router because the router has a round ball bearing therefore it's not going to make a square cut. So you come back with a chisel. Um, sometimes you can score it ahead of time then lay your chisel blade right on there and it kind of follows that line. There I am just checking making sure I don't go down too far. Um, We'll see what else we got going on here. Uh, see all my cobwebs? I need to clean up a little bit. Ah, that means produ productivity, doesn't it? You got a nice messy shop. Messy, messy shop. Um, there I am just showing, getting the corners cleaned up. I go back with this block. Oh gosh, I gotta fix this better. But uh, going back with the block, Sanding that um, every surface getting any getting rid of any burrs or anything um, Here I am coming outside nice nice view look at that goodness at all that green um, I'm gonna set that right there Oopsie like that that way we won't fall again um, I try to work outside as much as I can it wasn't too windy uh, I put some stain on there. Uh, you can use a brush. You can use the little bitty rag things they sell. Um, I've just got a stain brush I use. I like the ones with the little angles on them. It's actually the same one I used for the bookcase. For the carcass from which these doors will go into. So um, just kind of put it on pretty heavy the first time. And then I go back. <clears throat> try to evenly distribute as I can. Um, I went ahead and stained and finished the doors off camera. Everybody's seen what that does. Measuring out on a piece of tape, make sure that I get um, where I can mark. I don't want to mark on the bookcase. And then I go back. I don't use one of those self-centering hole drill bits. I just take a little um, ice pick all there and uh, mark it. Go back with a really small drill bit. I think that's like a sixteenth, um, just to give myself a little bit of pilot. That way it doesn't split the wood too much. Um, and uh, I wanted it to look like luggage stacked on top of one another. Uh, I thought that would have been pretty cool. So that's what I'm doing with the little buckles. They don't serve any purpose other than just visually looking pretty cool. Um, there I am, backing up. Look at that. I used the force to open the door, by the way. Um, I thought this was a pretty cool little shot. I've always seen people do that, where you carry something in front of you and you film, and the background moves around you and you don't move. I thought that was pretty cool. 
And there I am. It's the first time I put them in there and it fit. That was me smiling. Um, there's a second door. I went ahead and siliconed the first one. That way it looks like I knew what I was doing on the second one. Um, there I'm sprinkling, sprinkling the little fasteners in there. Just a little sprinkle. Just, just maybe just a little bit more. Yeah, we'll put just a little bit more there. I think I ended up having like the perfect amount too. There I am using my uh, built-in measuring tape. Um, I don't really know how many of those to put in there. So I just put, I don't know how many I put. I just, I went through and used an old dull uh, chisel there. I can kind of use the angle. Um, there I am putting some silicone down. Um, fun fact, a lot of people don't know uh that i used to be an rv tech i worked on rvs for a living and i've put down my fair bead of uh my fair mini beads of silicone um there i am putting it in uh the piano hinge if you hinge it up you can kind of let it sit down on that there i am holding it with my thumb and my finger uh and then what i'll do is i'll put a screw on there uh, previous I'll have it set out laid up that way when I come in and say I mounted the doors before I stained them so I've got a several holes that match up that way I can come in after I've stained and put the finish on um, find those holes so I'm not look at that look at that that looks pretty cool yeah it's finally coming together I'm giving myself a little bit of a pat on the back um, these are some uh, door knobs that the uh, uh, our friends that I'm making the, the bookcase for they had two original ones there they are in the back that was on um, her home quite some time ago and she just you know she kept them and uh, for a project and this was the perfect opportunity to use them so she found some ones that were really really close to them and uh, sent them to me there I am just cleaning them up um, look how unbalanced that thing is See it shaking? It's that Harbor Freight special. Uh, it was cleaned up really, really well. I was really impressed. Look at that. Showing it off. Um, and so what I did with those is off camera, I took a carriage bolt and uh, I flattened one side at the very end to kind of mimic the hardware that those old uh, doorknobs go into because it's actually like a square bolt with threads on it that they use. Um, there I am, all four doors and handles on. Uh, just kind of showing it off. I need to dust it a lot better, but that's what happens when it's in my shop. It's gonna get dirty. Um, there I am doing a small pan up. Just showing off my old, uh, the old handiwork. I, uh, I really enjoyed doing this. I mean, it, it, it took me a while um, to kind of get everything going, um, but it really turned out, it turned out really well. I, uh, it's the first time I've done something this big. I've done small things with doors, I've done chests, I've done cabinets. Um, but anything that's going to be like an actual decorative piece of furniture other than dining room tables um, that actually have moving parts, this was probably my the biggest project that I've taken on. Um, I really enjoy doing it. Um, I know they're going to have a lot of fun with it. They're going to get a lot of really good use out of it. Uh, now I just got to figure out how to get it to them. But there it is. I'm showing it off. I wanted it to look like finger joints, like it was all individual little pieces that all had to come together to make this, this thing. It just started off as an idea, you know, a small conversation, and a, a, I had a metal bookcase to go off of. And uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button. Y'all take care.